these conference guests, to the best and to the rest, we thank God for each of us, amen, who are here present. Uh, just a quick moment about my stole. This is one of the stoles that I wear uh, when I am um, ministering to the soldiers. I have about 500 soldiers that I'm responsible for, and about 150 of those soldiers are getting ready to uh, leave this country and, and deploy. And so I wanted to honor them today um, by wearing this stole and just reminding them that their chaplain is with them, even though I won't be physically boots on ground. I'm with them in spirit. Now, before I share this text, I have to apologize uh, because um, I don't have a message about Pentecost. Hey, Amen. I heard a lot of Pentecost on yesterday, but I am here to remind us that he paid the cost. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And because he has paid the cost, we have nothing to fear. Right. Amen. First Kings uh, chapter 17, starting at verse 1. I'll read from the New American Standard Bible. It says these words, Now Elisha the Tishbite who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall certainly be neither dew nor rain during these years, except by my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself. Amen, hide yourself. He says, um, by the brook Sheriff, which is east of the Jordan, and it shall be that you will drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide food for you there. So Elijah went and did everything according to the word of the Lord, and he went and lived by the brook Sheriff, which is east of the Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and, in the, and, and they also brought him food in the evening, yeah. and he would drink from the brook. But it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Right. For a few moments, I want to encourage these ordinands this afternoon from the subject matter, faithful service in dry places. Right. Faithful service in dry places. Yes, sir. It is my intention that this message is delivered to serve as encouragement to those who are being ordained and now as well as to those of you who will one day experience this process of ordination. Also, this message should serve as a reminder to those who have already been deployed on this vocational expedition. Yeah. If we're not careful, we can easily be influenced by what we think, what we feel, and what we see. If we're not discerning, we can be upset. We can be set up for expectational failure from the wrong sources. Mm -hmm. You can actually make the mistake of watching too many YouTube videos of Dr. Gina Stewart or Dr. Marcus Crosby, and, right. and you can visit one of the leading churches in our Zion and, and easily get it misconstrued. You can misinterpret that your talent and your time is supposed to bring you the same results in ministry that you see others operating in. You, you can know someone's journey in this ministry and you can assess that your travails are, they came at a much deeper and a, a, a much heavier cost than your colleagues and, and that will trick you into believing that you're supposed to be entitled to what they have received because you have been doing this thing for a long time, because you have been ordained with the highest ordination, you might feel some type of way when Bishop does not call your name for a certain appointment. All right. uh -huh. Some folk think that because they have seniority that they should be next in line for the big church and the better position, but if I can help you this afternoon, my sisters and brothers, the reality, at least in the CME church, is that you probably will not receive your ordination papers and a 2,000 member church at the same time. But rather you might find yourself 
on the playing field like Elijah where you are ordained with a, di with a dying or a drying church. Yeah. Amen, somebody. I know that this is an exciting news to us, but here is the hope in the message. It does not matter where you are located and it does not matter how, how bad things might look. God is still able to give you what you need to survive the moment. Let's journey with Elijah for just a moment. Elijah is in a dual fight for his life. Mm -hmm. Elijah is running from King Ahab because the prophet has pronounced a famine in the land of God's people. And because of this, Ahab is now on the look for Elijah. He is seeking him out to destroy him. So Elijah has to fight for survival and to skip town for a little while. But Elisha is also in a fight with God. Yeah. He's fighting against the will of God to go where God is sending him. And I would offer to us this morning or this afternoon that, that, that some of us might be able to relate to this struggle because you might think that you know better than God where you need to be. You might be trying to tell God where, where your feet should be planted. And, and so we begin to engage God in a wrestling match trying to prove that we have purpose somewhere else. I know the text doesn't exp expose this or say this, but I could imagine that Elijah is not pleased with doing what God told him to do and saying the things that God told him to say. And then as a reward of, of being committed and faithful to God, he's sent to hide out in the desert. I know I'm speaking to the masses right here when I say that it's difficult to serve faithfully and then to feel like you have been slighted by God. It's hard to have the joy of the Lord down in your heart and serve in the church only to be what, what looks like uh, you've been dealt a bad hand. Elijah did exactly as God had told him to do. And now he finds himself living outside of comfortable and familiar territory. There were no holiday inn beds. There were no idle down pillows, no couches. No living rooms, no kitchen spaces for Elijah to, 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 to hang out in the desert. Elisha followed God's instruction completely and now uh, as a result he finds himself laying his head on rocks and using twigs as cover while he is out in the elements. Elijah has left his comfort zone. The Lord, even though he's in a, a place of, of, of isolation, he's out in the desert the Lord made sure that Elijah would have five-star quality dining. It wasn't Ruth Chris, but, but, but the Lord said, I'm going to send the ravens to feed you at the Raven Tavern by the brook. God tells Elijah that you'll be fed by the ravens and they'll be your personal chefs. And, and God says, I've commanded the ravens to feed you when you get there. And just as God had said, it happened as the ravens would come and feed Elijah at least for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the ravens caught on to what they were doing. Y'all know ravens can be stingy, but they fed the prophet for a little while. Elijah was also able to drink from the brook sheriff to quench his thirst. But then verse 7 of the text happens. The Bible says that the brook dried up. And I can imagine now that it didn't just dry up in one day. So as Elijah is sitting by the brook, I can imagine that Elijah is watching the brook dry up slowly day by day. Can I just say this for some of us that are thinking it? Some of you are hearing this message and, and you are thinking about the churches and the people in your church and you are slowly watching some of them dry up. You are hearing this message and you're thinking about how you are watching your ministry slowly dissipate. Elijah is watching the brook dry up and as he is watching this, he has to contemplate what his next move will be. Watch this, God sends him there, but now the brook is drying up and God hasn't responded. Anything 
that, that God would say to him would be appropriate, but the prophet now finds himself in a situation where the brook is drying up and it feels like God has disappeared. Can I ask you a question today, saints of God? Have you ever been in a situation like Elijah where it looks like your brook is drying up? And when you try to ask God what to do next, it feels like God ain't saying nothing back to you. You might even feel like God is ignoring you. Elijah is in a predicament and when God finally responds to him, God sends the prophet to a place that appears to be worse off than the place that he's already in. God sends the prophet from one dry place to the next. And not only does he send him from one dry place to the next, but he also sends him to encounter a woman who is widowed and desperate. If you know anything about women during the, the, the time of the Old Testament, a woman who lived in the Old Testament time uh, uh, that didn't have a husband, uh, uh, she was in a bad place. She, if, you don't know, if you don't know much about a, a woman that was widowed, uh, had to depend on her family in order to sustain life. And, and sure enough, when the prophet gets to this woman, he finds her preparing herself to die. I know this message may come a little hard, but if I could turn our focus for just a moment, I would like to offer us to uh, offer to us a model that that the prophet responds to God. This is a model that I think is appropriate for us. Yeah these ordinance and those of us who have been pastoring in the Lord's church. I believe that, that, that Elijah's response to God offers us some hope along this journey. Elijah has been sent from one dry place to the next, but even in the midst of his experiences, the prophet remains faithful to the promise. I would offer this afternoon that Elisha is reminded of God's word in Deuteronomy 31 and 6. As Moses is talking to the children of Israel, Moses tells them to be strong and to be courageous. Don't be afraid of, or don't be terrified because of your opposition, because the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you, nor will God forsake you. Elijah understands that God would sustain him in the midst of the challenges, but, but he had to commit himself to serve faithfully in the dry places. Three points really quickly that I think is, is helpful for us as uh, we continue to navigate this journey with the Lord. If you keep these three things in mind, uh, yeah. as you find yourself going from dry place to dry place, I believe that it's going to help you uh, and it will sustain your ministry. The first thing that you need to remember is that God selected you. Yeah. Isaiah 43 and 1 reminds us that God called us by name and because the Lord has called us by, by name God is saying to us you belong to me the Lord says you are mine and because you belong to the Lord you must know and understand that God has marked you with purpose you can't dictate to God what you think is best for your life, but we must understand that even in the midst of difficult situations God has your best interest at hand you have to be like Elijah saying, out of all of the places that you could have sent me, God, I'm still going to trust you. Out of all of the things that you would have allowed in my life, God, I still trust you. God will always allow things that will stretch you and stretch your faith so that your faith will grow. Sometimes we don't like to use certain muscles. And depending on which elliptical uh, machine or exercise machine that you use uh, will determine how those muscles are stretched. If you've not been to the gym in a long time, you can't go in there uh, uh, thinking that you're just going to uh, overpower and, and, and take on a whole lot of stuff. You'll kill yourself. But you got to start slow. Sometimes God uh, moves us on this journey very slowly because God uh, is trying to strengthen those muscles. But you have to understand and know uh, that God is not going to put it all on you one, in, in one day. God is not going to allow it to happen uh, all at one time. But God will continue to stretch you beyond your natural limits. You have to understand 
that God is stretching you not to hurt you, yeah. but God wants to stretch your spiritual capacity yeah. to move you into the next season of your life that God has ordained you for because here it is, uh, if you went into your next season right now, it will kill you. Yeah. If you went into your next season right now, you're not strong enough, but God uh, has to work on those muscles. God uh, has to get you prepared so when the next season comes, uh, you'll be able to survive. God selected you. Secondly, we must know and be reminded that God sent you. So often in the church, we have placed power. Bishops, cover your ears. We placed authority. And even there has been blame on the shoulders of the presiding prelate. Amen. Because we think sometimes that they are the ones that are sending us where we go. I know you think it. But the reality is, is that they are leaning on and trusting the presence and the power of God. And I'm a believer today that God orchestrates all things even your appointment God orchestrates all things when it seems like humankind is running the show God still orchestrates all things the Bible says that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and the Lord is able to move the king wherever God desires you need to know that God is in charge of all things it doesn't matter where your feet land. You have to know and understand that God is still in control. And it's by God's provisional periscope that you are placed where you are. And God has allowed you to be placed where you are because God not only is going to provide provision, but where you are, God says, I can still promote you. God says to Jeremiah, before you were born in the belly, I knew you, I purposed you, I designed you, I created you to stand against the test. Every now and then, uh, you ought to look at your opposition square in the face uh, and tell your, tell your struggle, tell uh, your test that I'm built for this, I was designed for this, and I will overcome uh, the situation that I face. We have to walk in conviction to believe that God knows the plan that he has for us. God's plan is to prosper us. This is not strange to us. God's plan is not to harm us. But this is the part I like. God's plan is to get us to an expected place. Some of y'all are missing this. You think that your trial is gonna stop you where you are. But the Lord is saying to you, I plan for you to get to an expected place. I don't care what type of season you're in. It doesn't matter how dried up the situation is looking. God says that if you trust me, I'll get you to that expected place. God is saying to us, if you trust me, it does not matter what they bring against you. It does not matter where you are pointed or planted. God says, matter of fact, I can make you bloom where you're planted. But if you just trust me, God says, I will get you to that expected place. Elijah may not have wanted to be in Zarephath, but he trusted God beyond what his eyes could see. And he follows God from one dry place to the next. Let me rush on. God selected you. God sent you. And then finally, you have to know that God sees you. You don't have to worry about where you are as long as you can remain in the eye view of the Lord. The prophet knew that in the midst of living in a dry place, that the Lord still had his eyes on him. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and 25, he says that we shouldn't worry about our lives. Don't worry about what you'll eat or what you drink. Don't worry about your body and what you'll put on. He says God sees the birds. God sees them flying in the air. The Lord is able to feed them. He says God sees the little the lilies of the field and God is still able to make them beautiful. He says if God is able to give food to the birds who don't have to sow or reap for their own food 
And if God can clothe the lilies of the field, which are here today and gone tomorrow, he says, surely then God can sustain you in the midst of your challenges. I like the way that Jesus says it. He says, instead of worrying about the mundane things, instead of worrying about the things that you could see, he says, focus on what is necessary. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of God's righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. I learned it this way a long time ago. When you learn how to focus on God's business, and when you, when you turn your attention to the Lord's business, then you actually free up the hands of God so that God can turn God's attention and focus on your business. But here's the encouragement in James 1 and 12. James reminds us, he says, happy are those who remain faithful under trials because when you succeed in passing such a test, you will receive a reward, the reward of life, which God has promised to those who loved him. Listen, you might find yourself in a dry season. You might find yourself in a place that's full of chaos. You might find yourself in a place where you don't want to be. But I want to just say to you, stay faithful to the call. Stay faithful to your purpose. In due season, you will reap if you don't faint. Will you help me close this sermon today? Here's the blessing of the text. What I find interesting in the text is when Elijah meets the woman, the Bible tells us that the woman is picking up sticks and she's preparing her last meal so that she and her son can die. But later in the text, if you read down a little further, the text will let us know that this lady's son actually dies and when the son dies the lady has a conniption fit she goes to the prophet and she begins to express her grief now she said to the prophet earlier I'm picking up some sticks so that me and my son can die but when, when God brought her some hope I guess she got too comfortable in, in getting the meal and getting the oil that never ran down well the Lord allowed her son to die and she goes to the prophet and she begins to have a fit I believe that's a word for the church today people will tell you one thing but they really mean something else she says she wanted her son to die but when her son actually died she about lost her mind sometimes don't focus on what they say but you got to focus on what God says you can't always take what people say and run with it people will have you in a hole if you trust them all the time put your trust in the Lord who is able to keep you from falling the Bible says that Elijah went to the woman he took her child out of his out of her arms and put the child in his hands the Bible tells us that Elijah went up to the upper room uh, where Elijah stayed, uh, laid the child on the bed, uh, and began to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, this is the part that I like about the text. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God listened to Elijah. Uh, he heard every word uh, that the prophet said. Uh, and what I'm saying to us today uh, is have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry. He will answer you by and by. You've got to learn to put your confidence and your trust in the Lord. The Bible says that when God heard him, God responded, put life back into the child. Elijah brought the child back to his mother's arms the lady said now I know that Jesus lives God is saying to us he wants you to go to those dry places so that somebody can say now I know that Jesus
from Bishop, but take someone by the hand and look him in the eye. Come on, take him by the hand. Look him in the eye. Amen. Come on, take him by the hand. Say, neighbor, neighbor. are you saved? If they say no, then you need to talk to that person right now. If they say no, you ought to encourage them to come down right now. And let them know that you will come with them right now. Accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. I, God know, God knows that'll work. Because there's some people come to church Sunday after Sunday, but have not given their life to Christ. And you can be that representative. Is that one? Is that one? Being saved is a good thing. Yes, sir. Being in Christ is a good thing. Yes, Let God be your God and Savior is a good thing. Yes. Is that one? Amen. God bless you. my task to announce that the this week's revival is coming to its end. Amen. <laughs> this has been a wonderful time in the Lord. Let us give God another hand of praise. Um, it, it has felt like a revival. And uh, although my brother did not preach about Pentecost, I, um, I saw the flame, <laughs> I felt the wind, amen, <laughs> so, amen, it might not have been, Pentecost might not have been uh, uh, the topic of the sermon, but it was in it, amen, it was in it, can we give God another hand of praise, amen, thank God, thank God, amen, thank God, so ordinance, you have heard a word from the Lord uh, on this, the occasion of your ordination and your admission into full connection. And now we're going to call on the ministry, the Committee on Ministerial Examination, and we're going to ask you to come, and we're going to proceed with the order, amen, of our service. All right, Dr. Jones. You're getting the chairs, thank you. Thank you. All right. Which one? Did you take this one? Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask those of you on the 
pulpit, if you would join me. And Dr. Jones, are we going to be behind the chancel? Or are we going to be? We're going to be behind the chancel room. All right. While they are having the chairs, uh, Dr. Jones, could we have the candidates, I think we could do this part right now, the candidates for the order of deacon, could they stand just where they are? All right. Could you face, those of you who are candidates, could you face the congregation? I like it that you have your names in front of you because so you could hold it up if anybody knows of anything against either of these candidates any reason why they should not be admitted into one of the offices of the cme church would you please say so now praise god you may be seated those who are coming forth for the order of elder will you do the same and face the congregation, amen. Since it's so many of you all, would you just call out your names one at a time, starting with the front row to my left, the sister to my left on the front row. Now, if there's anyone in this congregation who knows of any reason why either of these candidates should not come before or be admitted into this office, would you please say so now? Hearing none, we invite you to take your seat. Let the church say amen. amen. All right, we now call on the committee. unto you these persons present to be ordained deacon. Lante Barber, Angela McCoy. And Willie Walter Gary. first section has been read so likewise the deacons must be grave not double tongued nor given to much wine not greedy or filthy lucre holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience and let those also be first proved then let them use the office of deacon being found blameless even so must their spouses be grave, no slanderers, sober, 
faithful in all things. Let the deacons be spouses of one mate. Let them rule their children and all of their households well. For they that use the office of deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. At this time, we will have the first question, and um, we do need our ordinance who they need. Uh, well, you can just repeat after me for your answers. All right, the first question will come from our presiding elder, and the next three questions, we will ask Bishop uh, Helton to read those. Question number one. Do you trust that you are inward, moved by the Holy Ghost, and take upon the office of ministry in the Church of Christ to serve God for promoting of his glory and edifying of his people? Right. Your answer is, I trust so. I trust so. All right, the next uh, three questions. Do you, without a doubt, believe all the canonical scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? And if you believe that, you would say, I do believe them. I do believe them. Will you diligently read or expound the same unto the people whom you shall be appointed to serve? If you agree with that, you will say, I will. I will. It appertains to the office of deacon to assist the elder in divine service, and especially when he or she ministers the Holy Communion, to help him or her in the distribution thereof, and to read and expound the Holy Scriptures, to instruct the youth, and in the absence of the elder, to baptize. And furthermore, it is his or her office to search for the sick. It means visiting people, poor and impotent, that they may be visited and relieved. Will you do this gladly and willingly? If you agree, you will say, I will do so by the help of God. I will do so by the help of God. Right. Will you apply all your diligence to frame and fashion your own lives and the lives of your families according to the doctrine of Christ? and to make both yourselves as well as your families, amen, as much as in you lieth, wholesome examples of the flock of Christ. If this is your intention, you will say, I will do so, the Lord being my helper. I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you reverently obey them to whom the charge and government over you is committed, following with a glad mind, and their following with a glad mind and will their godly admonition. And that means that when those could be a presiding elder, a man could be a pastor in the local congregation in which you serve, could be a presiding bishop those who have the charge and the governance over you, when the admonition is godly, will you follow it? If so, the answer is, I will endeavor to do so, the Lord being my helper. I will endeavor to do so, the Lord being my helper. And it is quite a... We're going to ask you now if, um, if you will if you will, um, if you will kneel, amen, if you do so, all right. That's a long reach. Yeah, when you're going to kneel, you should probably We are, we are creatures of habit, aren't we? We have, um, to tell you the truth, my, 
my sisters and brother. You don't need chairs. We've got an altar. So we're creatures of habit. <laughs> and not only do we have an altar, it has a kneeling rail. I could be selfish and ask you to kneel on the floor, but since God has given you a kneeling rail, that might be the best thing. Amen. We're at we're at Parkwood. <laughs> we're at Parkwood. Amen. God knew you all were going to be here, and He gave you a cushion. <laughs> amen. All right, let the church say Amen. That's a good thing. All right. Lante Barber, take thou authority to execute the office of deacon in the church of God in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. Angela McCoy, take the authority to execute the office of deacon in the church of God in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Walter Willie Gary Jr., take thou authority to execute the office of deacon in the church of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. 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 And do we have the Bible? All right. All right. And um, you have been selected. I want you to pull this Bible. Angela McCoy, take thou authority to read the Holy Scriptures in the Church of God and to preach the same. Lante Barber, take thou authority to read the Holy Scriptures in the Church of God and to preach the same. Walter Willie Gary, take the authority to read the Holy Scriptures in the Church of God and to preach the same. Amen. All right, and now we will have this scripture read. All right, Brother Gary, will you read Luke 12, 35? through 38. Let your lines be girded about and your lights burning and eat yourself like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh that may they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he come, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he should gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed, are those servants. Amen. 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 My brothers and my sisters, you have gone through a ceremony and you have gone through it on your knees. And I like to emphasize the fact that anytime a person pursues office elevation in the church, 
the way to pursue it is start on your knees. Amen. Will you please arise? Amen. Amen. All right. My sister, you have pursued an office and you began on your knees. Will you please arise in the name of Jesus? Amen. Bishop Helton. My brother, you have duly been ordained while on your knees. You may rise now as an ordained deacon in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. God bless you. Will you please turn and face the congregation? We present to you these ordained deacons. Amen. In the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. All right. Um, I'm going to present you, and Bishop Helton will present you a Bible as well. Do you all have spouses in the congregation? Not here, not here. Could your spouse just join you? Amen. Come on up, my sister. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Give her a hand as she comes. Um, we just make time for the spouse to come because uh, what they go through, Amen. they go through together. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, Reverend Lante Barber, I present to you this Bible and I present to you this certificate. It is customarily said in the CME Church that we give you a certificate that is unwrinkled and unstained and make certain that you do not wrinkle or stain it with your life. Amen. All right. And um, this is for Reverend Angela McCoy. I present to you this Bible, and I present to you in addition to the Bible, I'm gonna let you hold it, in addition to the Bible, there is a certificate. It's unwrinkled and it's unstained, and we ask you to not stain it or wrinkle it with your life. May God bless you and your ministry. Brother Walter Willie Gary, we present to you this certificate. It is a certificate of honor. Please do not stain it with any of your characteristics or your character. And may God bless you as you have been duly ordained today in the house of the Lord. God bless you. And present to you this Bible as well. Uh, brother photographer, did you get all of the pictures that you were supposed to get? All right. You may return to your seat. All right. Give them a hand as they return. Oh, that's right. I don't think the Bibles are signed. All right. All right. We're back in your hands.
beautiful class. Isn't that right? Amen. Y'all been walking together for how many years? You, you've been walking together for five. You've been walking together for, for five. Anyone longer? You've been walking together for eight. So eight years, five. Today is your day. Amen. Today is your day. All right. Bishop. Yes. Okay. Mary Landrum. Where is Mary Landrum? Here she is. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Give Mary Landrum a hand. Amen. Every now and then we get left off, but God sees too we don't get left out. Amen. <laughs> so you're still in. Praise the Lord. Um, my brothers and sisters, um, these are the persons who, after due examination, have come before you, and we find nothing to the contrary, that they are lawfully called to the function of elder and to that ministry in the church. They are persons who are appropriate for this duty. We have asked you, were there any impediments that you might see you have found none? So therefore, we will proceed with the service of ordination. You have heard, brothers and sisters, as well as in your private examination, and you heard in the exhortation, which, is, which was exquisitely delivered to you on today. Let the church say amen. amen. And in the holy lesson that was taken out of the gospel and the writings read in your hearing of the apostles of what dignity and how great importance there is in this office whereunto you are called. And now again we exhort you in the name of the Lord Jesus to say, which is to say, to be messengers, watch persons, and stewards of the Lord, to teach and to admonish, to feed and provide for the Lord's family, to seek for Christ's sheep that are dispersed abroad, and for his children who are in the midst of this evil world, that they may be saved through Christ forever. We have a good hope that you all weighed and pondered all of these things with yourselves and your families long before the moment that you stand before us right now. For five years and for eight years, you have pondered these things and that you have clearly determined that by God's grace, you are going to give yourselves wholly to this office whereunto it has pleased God to call you so that as much as in you lieth, you will apply yourselves, you will apply yourself, you will apply yourselves wholly to this one thing and draw all your cares and all of your studies this way that you will continually pray to God through the meditation of our only Savior, Jesus Christ, for the heavenly assistance of the Holy Spirit, that daily reading and weighing the scriptures, you may wax ripe, riper and stronger in your ministry, and that you may fashion them after an endeavor that is from time to time to sanctify the lives of you as well as your families, and to fashion them after the rule and doctrine of Christ, that you may be wholesome and godly examples and patterns for people to follow. Amen. Bishop Helton, would you read that last section? And now that this present congregation of Christ here assembled may also understand your minds and wills in these things, and that this your promise may the more move you to do your duties, you shall now answer plainly to these things, which we, in the name of God, and his church shall demand of you, touching the same. Do you think in your heart that you are truly called according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ to the office of elder? If so, you will answer, I think so.
Are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain sufficiently all doctrine required of necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined out of said scriptures to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach nothing as required of necessity to eternal salvation, but that which you shall be persuaded may be concluded and proven and proved by the scriptures? If so, your answer will be, I am so persuaded and have so determined by God's grace. Thank you so very much. Uh, Dr. Brown, uh, will you read the next two, please? Will you then give your faithful diligence always so to minister the doctrine and sacraments and the discipline of Christ as the Lord has commanded? If you will, your answer is, I will do so by the help of the Lord. I will do so by the help of the Lord. Will you be ready with all faithful diligence to banish and drive away all erroneous and strange doctrines contrary to God's word and to use both public and private admonitions, exhortations, as well as to the sick as to the whole within your charge as need shall require and occasion shall be given. The answer is, I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you be diligent in prayers and in reading the Holy Scriptures and in such studies as help to the knowledge of the same, laying aside the study of the world and of the flesh? If you agree with that, you will say, I will endeavor so to do. I will endeavor so to do. The Lord being my helper. The Lord being my helper. Will you be diligent to frame and fashion for yourselves and your families according to the doctrine of Christ? to make both yourselves and them as much as in you lieth wholesome examples and patterns to the flock of Christ. And if you agree, you will say, I, will, I shall apply myself thereto. I shall apply myself thereto. The Lord being my helper. The Lord being my helper. Will you maintain and set forward as much as lieth in you quietness, peace, and love among them that are or shall be committed to your charge. If you agree, you will say, I will do so, the Lord being my helper. I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you reverently obey your chief ministers unto whom is committed the charge and government over you, following with a glad mind, and will their godly admission, godly admonitions, submitting yourselves to their godly judgment, and if you agree, you will say, I will do so, the Lord being my helper. I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Almighty God, let us pray, who has given you this will to do these things, grant also unto you strength and power to perform the same, that he may accomplish his work which he hath begun in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we all kneel at this time. The Lord being your helper. <laughs> and you all will re repeat the words after me that I will recite for you. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, enlighten with celestial fire. And you always say, Thou the anointing spirit art, 
thou the anointed spirit art, who doth thy sevenfold gifts in part. Thy sevenfold gifts in part. Thy blessed unction, I will say this, thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life and fire and love. And you will say, enable with perpetual light, enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinding sight. The dullness of our blinding sight. Amen. Anoint and cheer our soul face with abundance of thy grace and you will say keep far our foes keep far our foes give peace at home give peace at home where thou art guide where thou art guide no ill can come no ill can come amen teach us to know the father son and thee of both to be but one and you all will say that through the ages all alone that through the ages all alone this may be our endless song this may be our endless song praise to thy eternal merit praise to thy eternal merit father son and holy spirit father son and holy spirit amen amen now let us pray almighty god our heavenly father who of thy infinite love and goodness toward us has given us thy only and most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and the author of everlasting life, who after he made perfect our redemption by his death and was ascended into heaven, sent abroad into the world his apostles, prophets, evangelists, doctors, and pastors, those whose labor and ministry he gathered together a great flock in all parts of the world to set forth the eternal praise of thy holy name. For these so great benefits of thy eternal goodness, and for that thou hast vouchsafed to call these thy servants here to present to the same office and ministry appointed for the salvation of humankind we render unto you most heartily thanks. We praise and worship you and humbly beseech you by the same, thy blessed Son, to grant unto us all who either here or elsewhere call upon your holy name that we may continue to show ourselves thankful unto thee for these and all others of your benefits that we may daily increase and go forward in the knowledge and faith of your name and may be, that your name may be forever glorified and your son Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Holy Spirit world without end let the church say amen. Now I do feel compelled to say, I feel compelled to say that if you have a condition that medically prevents you from kneeling upon your knees for a long period of time, you will need to take responsibility and stand. Amen. But if you do not have that medical condition, then you may remain upon your knees, but the decision is in your hands. Amen. We would not force that upon you. Let the congregation say amen. These are religious ceremonies. These are not sex. We are not a cult. We do not make you do things that will damage you, amen, physically, spiritually, or mentally. All right, with that, thank you. With that being said, so the elders of the church, amen, if you want to join us you may in full connection we're going to start on this end and if you have a pastor who wants to be in line behind you we'll allow that to happen let the church say amen so if there's a pastor who wants to get near here his or her member. And for those of you who are pastors of more than, of more than one, you have to choose. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. All right.
right, we're all together. We're where we need to be. All right. For the Reverend Barbara Neesmith Ware, the Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say... The Lord pour upon thee the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of all of our hands. And be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Reverend Velma Pruitt, as we place our hands upon your head. The Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Reverend Tina Pegues, the Lord pour upon thee the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You can, you can place the hands on the head. Amen. Reverend Frederick Pegues, the Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let the church say, Amen. 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 Reverend Bernard Miles, the Lord pour upon thee the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. Elders, let me say you can place, I want you to place your hands upon the head, those of you who can. Amen. Upon the head. There is a weight that comes with the office. Amen. Reverend Ricky Corley. The Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost for the office and the work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto you by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let the church say, Amen. Reverend Felicia Irby Cross, the Lord pour upon thee the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Reverend Jeffrey Lamar Daniels, the Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost 
for the office and the work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, that the church say, Amen. Amen. Reverend Cynthia Gail Kell, the Lord pour upon thee the Holy Ghost for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacrifice. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Reverend. Mary Landrum left off but not left out. Amen. God knows how to do it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? The Lord pour upon you the Holy Ghost for the office and for the work of an elder in the church of God now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, let the church say, Amen. 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 All right, we need Bibles. All right. You can give us Mary Lundrum and Reverend Cynthia Gail Kale. Take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Yeah. Reverend Jeffrey Lamar Daniels. And Reverend Felicia Irby Cross, take the authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Amen. 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 Reverend Ricky Corley and Reverend Bernard Miles, take the authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Amen. Since we're doing this together. <laughs> Reverend Frederick Pegues, Reverend Tina Pegues. Take the authority to read, to preach the word of God, and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Amen. Reverend Velma Pruitt and Reverend James Robinson. Take the authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Amen. Reverend Barbara Naismith Ware, take the authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. Amen. Amen.
Let us bow now for a word of prayer. Most first, merciful Father, we ask you to send upon these your servants your heavenly blessing, that they may be clothed with righteousness, and that your word spoken by their mouths may have such success, that it may never be spoken in vain. Grant also that we may have grace to hear and receive what they deliver out of your most holy word, or agreeable to the same as the means of our salvation, that in all words and deeds we may seek your glory and the increase of the kingdom. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, let the church say, Amen. Let us continue to pray. Prevent us, O Lord, in all things, that with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in thee, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. All right, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Um, the senior bishop, not of the CME church, but we are all one Methodist family in the AME Zion church with whom I shared as a colleague and a friend and brother when I was in Hartford and he was in Hartford. We shared together and when he became a bishop, I attended his conferences and I heard Reverend Kenneth Monroe say these words to all of those who were ordained. He said, you went on your knees, <laughs> amen, before this church, looking, seeking, and praying for God's blessing. And he has blessed you with an office. And now you may arise from your knees as elders in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen. And, and my word to all of you, and I think Bishop Heldman might be right for those of us who are on this side of the podium. Amen. To shake hands with them. Amen. While we're talking. So my word to all of you is that elevation doesn't come by chasing it. It doesn't come by running after it. It doesn't come by taking <laughs> and forcefully obtaining. But elevation in the church of Jesus Christ comes just the way you were ordained. It comes by beginning on your knees. Amen. In prayer, seeking the face of God, calling out on his holy name. You now have the highest ordination the highest credential in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen. Everyone you see, no matter what color they wear, they will all be no higher than, amen, than the order of elder in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Bishop Helton and I are elders, <laughs> amen, in full connection. All right, do you have spouses? We would ask you to turn now and, oh, I'm sorry. I have to give you one more thing before you turn. All right. Bishop Helton, will you, will you assist me? Yes. So that's the furthest. Those two. All right. And I will take two. God bless you. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to let jo Dr. Jones give me which two I should have. All right, that's the first one, and that's the second one. Thank you. All right, this top Bible is for you, Reverend Pruitt. This Bible is for you, Reverend Pegues, and certificate, Elder Pegues. Would you help me, Bishop, and we're going to Hand them all out. Bernard Miles, God bless you. Certificate and Bible. 
If you're calling, God bless you. Your Bible and certificate. All right, Reverend Irby. Reverend Daniels. Reverend Cynthia. I will. Gail, Kale, God bless you. I your will, certificate uh, and Bible. Make your labor a little easier. Mary Lynch, I'll God take bless your you. name to my certificate <laughs> of ordination. It's the, being an elder in the CME Church has burdens. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you all have a Bible and you have a certificate. So I would like for you to take the certificate out. Amen. Bishop Helton, I would like for you to give the admonition that we always make, and I think these traditions have validity. We, we don't use the regular standard modern English in the ceremony because there is something about the office that carries the weight of a certain level of sacredness that sometimes we use a language that stretches us. We don't normally say, prevent us, O oh Lord. <laughs> Amen. But we use that language so that your ear can hear in a different way what we're saying. It should have that level of meaning. And these are not ordinary certificates. Bishop Helton. These certificates have been duly signed by the presiding prelate of this district. They are unmarred. They don't have any stains on them. And after 44 years of ministry, I'm honored to say I could go back to every congregation I've pastored through the front door and pastor again because that certificate I still have, unstained and unmarred. And you will be able to do the same and God will bless you in your going and in your coming. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. And as an elder in the church, you will be called upon for your words, amen. The words that you share, the words that you preach, the words that you teach, you'll be called upon for your words. And often you look and you say, well, I might not have anything that I can say. I've been in situations and in circumstances where I've looked inside of James and there was nothing inside James that could speak to the situation that lay before me, nothing. But the word that you have, amen, is a word that comes beyond you. It's the word of God. And I have found that in situations, no matter how much education I might have had and how well I might have thought that I might be able to address a situation, I have found that there is some power in that word that just sharing a simple scripture in the greatest crisis or catastrophe could ever confront people, but in just sharing a script, simple scripture and just letting the scripture be the scripture and letting the scripture be the word, I have found that there is peace there is comfort and strength that comes from that. Amen. You go through an airport, they'll tell you, you can't carry a weapon in here. Amen. But when I go through the, weapon, through the airport, I have the greatest weapon. <laughs> Amen. It makes it through every TSA station that I've ever gone through. And that is the word of God. So you are equipped, my brothers and sisters, and in the, every aspect of the word, you are armed and dangerous. Amen. So God bless you and keep you. Now, you have spouses. Would you turn? Thank this wonderful committee. And those of you who have spouses, would you invite them to come? And if you have somebody special, I'm going to start at this end. If you have somebody that you want to stole you, would you please call them? So you're going to need to step, take a step forward, and that person is going to stole you. I would like for them to be behind you because that would make it, unless the photographer is, where is the photographer? There 
Right. Okay. Yeah, I would like for that person to be behind you because of where the photographer is. And congregation, pardon if it takes a minute for this, but they only get ordained elder once in the CME church. All right. So, okay. And if you will, just wait for the photographer to get to you before you are, you are stoled. All right. So we'll take this moment for you all. This is your ordination. So you can go ahead. That's right. There we go. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to ask those of you who are standing in front, that's right. Be, take note of the photographers. Thank you all for not minding me catching this moment. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I didn't call myself being in the picture. <laughs> Go right ahead. But I wanted to catch the moment. Reverend Corley, I don't know how you're going to get that over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> but you all been working this for a few years. <laughs> she said, I got it. <laughs> That's my man. I got it. Amen. <laughs> all right. All right. We're about at the end, y'all. About at the end. All right, Reverend Daniels is having it done by committee, amen. <laughs> okay, so would you go ahead and place the stole on him, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right. Kale, you already have it. All right. And Reverend Landrum. All right. Photographer is here. All right. Very good. All right. Give God some praise. Give God some celebration. And now, my brothers and my sisters, you may take your seat. And God bless you and God keep you. Let's celebrate them one more time. And now we have um, full connection. And the candidates. Reverend Christine Green, Reverend Janet Corley, Reverend Charles Walker. Reverend Christine Green, Reverend Janet Corley, and Reverend Charles Walker. Uh, who is related to Reverend Walker? Who is, is there somebody here from his church? Okay. He came out of Fawcett. Come on up, Pastor. Uh, Reverend Walker's wife uh, became ill since he has been here, and he has gone to be by her side, and we are not so formal that we are going to tell the brother that you can't be by your wife. You need to be in this ceremony. If you're by your wife, you are in this ceremony. 
Amen, amen. So if the church is about anything, it ought to be about a husband being with his wife because you're supposed to exemplify Christ and the church. So this really makes sense. So you all let him know we got his back. Amen <laughs> on today. So Bishop Helton, would you help me with this uh, process and his Reverend Walker's um, his pastor, former pastor, is here in his stead. To all of these candidates into membership into the annual conference has full connection. According to the usage and discipline of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, you, are, you have indicated that you are convinced that you should enter the ministry of Christ's Holy Church. You have declared, have declared that you are willing to face any sacrifice. And that means a lot because every one of my appointments were 800 miles apart. And this last appointment, 6,500 miles. You have declared that you are willing to face any sacrifice that may be involved in the consecration of life. You have indicated that you are so situated in life that you can accept the obligations of the itinerant minister. Hear what I'm saying. You have affirmed that you will abstain from those acts which may injure your work and influence as a minister of Christ, and that you will keep before you as one great objective of your life the advancement of the kingdom of God. Give heed to the words of the gospel of Christ when he said, if any man or a woman, I will add parenthetically, will come after me. Let him or her deny him or herself and take up his or her cross and follow me. In accordance with the discipline of the CME Church and the historic usages of our communion, you will, in the presence of this conference, give answer to the following questions. All right. Have you faith in Christ? You answer yes. yes. Are you going on to perfection? Yes. Do you expect to be made perfect in love in this life? Are you earnestly striving after it? Yes. Are you resolved to devote yourself wholly to God and his work? Yes. Do you know the general rules of our church? Yes. Will you keep them? Yes. Have you studied the doctrines of the CME church? Yes. After full examination, do you believe that our doctrines are in harmony with the Holy Scriptures. Yes. Will you teach and preach and maintain them? Yes. yes. Have you studied our form of church discipline and polity? Yes. yes. Do you approve our church government and polity? Yes. yes. Will you support and maintain yes. them? Yes. Will you diligently instruct the children in every place? Yes. Will you visit from house to house? Will you recommend fasting or abstinence by both precept and example? Yes. Are you determined to employ all your time in the work of God? Yes. Amen. That's something. <laughs> Are you in debt as to embarrass you in your work? Careful how you answer that. <laughs> you can't say that, can you, Pastor? <laughs> you believe not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Will you observe the following directions? Will you be diligent, never unemployed, never triflingly employed, or never, never trifle away time, never spend any more time at any one place than is strictly necessary? 
Will you be punctual? Will you do everything exactly at the time and do not mend our rules, but keep them not for wrath, but for conscious sake? Is your answer yes? Yes. Amen. My sister in Christ, we welcome you to full connection in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. You let Brother Walker know you stood in his stead. Amen. Amen. And we are in prayer for his wife. Amen. We are in prayer for his wife. What's Brother Walker's wife's name? Deborah Walker. Would you all just pray in your private moments? Remember. <clears throat> the name Deborah Walker. Would you present those? Reverend Janet Corley, Amen. the certificate <clears throat> is a full connection. If I were all of you, I would find a very beautiful frame and frame it, for it is just that valuable. God bless you. Reverend Christine Green, I present unto you your certificate of full connection. Amen. And this is, will be for Reverend Charles Walker, a certificate of full connection. They have a few other signatures that will go on those, and you can get those back momentarily. <clears throat> All right, let us now bow in a word of prayer. Dr. Brown, will you read the prayer of consecration? Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose love and salvation you manifested in Jesus Christ, your only Son, pour out your Spirit upon your church that it may preach the gospel to all peoples Send forth, we beseech you, workers into the fields for harvest. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and with faith. Defend them in all dangers and temptations against fiery darts and the wiles of the devil. And hasten the time when the fullness of the nation shall be gathered into your kingdom through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the church say, and amen. You may return to your seat. Can we praise God for this committee? kept you a long time. <laughs> All right. Um, you all have some. We have a um, we have a clergy that came out of their collar. <laughs> you know who you are. Amen. <laughs> You know who you are. If you came in without one, you know you don't have it. Amen. Uh, is there, we, you, you have presentations, is that what we have? And we have thanks for the pastor. Uh, did we appoint a person to give thanks to our pastor? <clears throat> Amen. Uh, I trust, uh, I entrust this responsibility right now to Reverend John Cradle, I'm sure he would do a fantastic job in saying thanks to our host church. Amen. Uh, host pastor, would you just, just, you're busy, but we want to say thank you to you and thank you to the church. 
Did Dr. Cradle come on? All right. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. I just want to ask a question. How many of us were satisfied and full on this visit? Let me show you. Amen. We heard some good preaching. We heard some good teaching. We had some good food, amen? amen. And the hospitality was just simply outstanding. I want to say to this host pastor at Parkwood Institution, the CME Church, and her staff, those who work in the kitchen, those ushers, those stewardesses, everyone that had anything to do with our comfort, we want to thank them in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus of Christ. Let us stand and give this pastor a mighty, mighty hand for the wonderful things that she has done for us on this day. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. elders if they will make their presentations first and then board chairpersons if you would make your presentations and remember presentations are to be made to Bishop and Mrs. Walker only. Reverend Eleanor Miller will make the presentation for the Winston-Salem Greenville District. On behalf of the courageous Charleston, Columbia District, we would like to present to a man that you and, and Bishop Helton have taken a couple of the words I was going to say about you, so I had to regroup, um, to a man who is after God's own heart, 
to a shepherd who leads his flock and know them by name, to a locomotive who starts out slow but moves along the way and keeps on moving and never stops until you get to the destination you need to be at. We, as the Charleston Columbia District, appreciate everything you have done for us. You feed us with the word. You are like E.F. Hutton. When you speak, we do listen because you say words of wisdom that we understand and that we need, that lifts us up and keeps us moving, that we're so excited that we are ready to run and move in our churches and do for you. To God be the glory. Thank you. Walker. Durham District. I would like to say to you personally, and I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of this entire uh, congregation, the church, I want to say that personally thank you for that Pentecost experience this week. God bless you, and thank you. But on behalf of the Durham District, our presiding elder, Tiffany Harris, and Mrs. Harris, we would like to say thank you for all that you do. I'm just so full, because I just had a, I had a, a little experience that last night that I just said, I wish I could personally just say, Thank Bishop Walker. I didn't know Elder Harris was going to ask me. But God is, God is good, you know. Amen. Amen. And that I've been having problems walking all week. But I walked up here to do this, y'all. I say so much. Yeah, 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 God. Look at God. Look at God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. But we thank you so much for your leadership. God bless you. Continue to bless you. And Mrs. Walker, in your ministry, you are truly a godsend to us. And I see you. I see your heart. And I thank you. I bless you. I and love that. you from the Durham District. I appreciate those words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I need some help going down there. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop Walker, can I, well, can I have the Board of Evangelism to please stand? The Board of Evangelism? Amen. Bishop Walker, from the east coast of the Carolina to the low country of the south, from the mountains to the rural areas, uh, the, from the Board of Evangelism, we just want to recognize you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for all that you do. Thank you for empowering us to, and allow us to do the work that we do. God bless you and God strengthen you. God bless you. Will all of the illustrious Women's Missionary Society members please stand? <laughs> Wonderful. Bishop Walker, on behalf of our president in her absence, uh, Sister Carolyn Stafford, and all of the Women's Missionary Society members who are gathered here today, we want to thank you for your stellar leadership. We want to thank you for your encouragement. Um, and your prayers as you lead us as well as the Carolina region to higher heights in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
please accept this small token of our appreciation as you uh, take Lady Walker out when yes. you get back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Amen. you all. Thank you for all that you've done. And on behalf of Dolores Walker, I want you to know that I appreciate you. Um, now we have the Winston-Salem Greenville District. Your members are asked, members and pastors are asked to go to the fellowship hall for disciplines. Amen. Also, there are some books that are available free on Christian literature. Can we thank, where is Reverend Bennett? Uh, she's back with the books, but we want to appreciate her. She has brought free uh, literature uh, from the Derek Prince Ministries, and we're appreciative of her for that. Thank you for, amen. We want to say thank you. Give her a hand. Thank you. Amen. Um, if there is something else I need to say before the benediction, please make me aware of it. Uh, Bishop Helton, your presence here this week has been golden. Amen. Uh, Mrs. Best, your presence here this week with us, amen, every day of our conference has been special, amen. Lady Helton, God bless you. We know you're doing. Amen. We know you're doing. Know you're doing good. Know you're somewhere doing well. And I notice um, um, Lady Best, and I notice she is there uh, with Lady Dunbar. Amen. And I appreciate that image because that tells you who people are in a way. That it's all about relationships. Isn't that right? And it's important that you help bring people along. So Mrs. Best has arrived, but she's not concerned about arriving. She's concerned about pulling others along as well. Like that. Amen. That's what it's all about. So are we ready to go? Yeah. All right. <laughs> let, us, let us receive the benediction. And I'm happy to do it. Uh, I believe we have one here on this program. I'll get to it. Um, I don't see it, but I'm going to do this one. <laughs> oh, here it is. It reads this way. 
for all that we've been through and for all that we've experienced this week, for all of the words that have been shared this week, so powerful, amen, and I hope it will rest with our hearts and minds. We offer you this benediction, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, May that peace keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Be safe as you journey home. Yes, sir. This is the Oh, we we hadn't given him here. No, we gave him a